What's going on guys? Welcome back. I'm here bringing you a new video. This time it's not on the speed. <clears throat> I'm taking a break from this guy. I'm tired of it. For sale. Just kidding though, but we're gonna be working on this car. So this Mazda Speed 3 belongs to a friend and we're gonna do a bunch of mods to it. So here's what we got. So we're gonna do the Garrett um, 3076 with a manifold, boost controller, map sensor, uh, three bar map sensor, and then we're gonna do the four inch intake and a methanol kit. So let's just hop right into it. Uh, the car is cold, the car was delivered to me last night, so it's nice and cold. Not gonna get burned with the manifold. But uh, if you remove these guys before, you know how much of a pain in the butt they are. So, first thing first, I'm gonna jack up the car. Actually, no, I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna start on doing some of those uh, downpipe bolts. All right, so up here we're pretty much done for now. I removed all the bolts but one. I left one on there. I also took off the O2 sensor. This guy, that's the first one up here, primary. And then, uh, what else? Oh, I left, yeah, like I said, I just left one on there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get onto the car and remove the two bolts that hold the downpipe to the exhaust and the secondary O2 sensor. And then that's it. The downpipe is uh, to come out. All right, so the downpipe is off. So I didn't record that. Um, you know, it's a little hard to record onto the car. So I'm gonna go ahead now and drain the oil and the coolant. All right, guys, oil is drained. I put a new oil filter in there. Uh, one of the reasons why I drain the oil is sometimes when you undo the oil lines on the turbo it tends to make a mess and also since we're getting a tune might as well put brand new oil in it and uh, so yeah so that's the reason why so next we're gonna drain the coolant because the coolant definitely not sometimes but always makes a mess the turbo has two coolant lines one in one out so we gotta drain that out so it doesn't make a mess and then we can take the turbo off draining to that bucket from there so I'm gonna go ahead now and tackle this area I'm gonna take the battery battery box intake inlet all that's gonna come out
update so everything is taken apart so the next thing i'm going to remove is the turbo um, so i'm just going to start by removing the coolant lines going to it and the oil lines the oil drain and the oil feed take those out and then go ahead and remove the four bolts on top there are four bolts holding the turbo right there to the manifold you undo those and you pull it out Everything up here is pretty much good to go. See, one of the coolant lines is off. I took off the mandrel, uh, banjo, sorry, banjo bolt for the oil feed. I took off that uh, heat shield behind the turbo. It kind of gets in, in the way of the uh, bolt that holds it to the manifold, so that's gotta be removed. Oh, I'm missing one bolt right here. So this guy right there, don't forget that guy. Uh, that bolt is holding this tube uh, running coolant to the heater. So I gotta undo that right there. And then the rest of the stuff is underneath. I gotta get onto the car and take, take off the oil return and the second coolant line. All right, everything underneath is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the four bolts up here. I got the turbo resting down there, so I gotta remove the manifold now and pull everything from the top. Everything is removed. Let me show you the difference here. Look at this. K04 GTX 3076. All right, so before we install the new turbos, there's some things that we gotta transfer, like uh, this water. This water outlet here, we gotta take it from the, it goes right there. We gotta take it from the K04 and transfer it to that one and then the one on top is supplied by them is here right that's the one that goes to the AGR housing and then GTX didn't used to do this but now they they supply you with your fittings and you got the hose that's for the drain I remember when I got my turbo they didn't offer that and we had to reuse well the shop that installed it had to reuse the uh, OEM drain I could be wrong maybe they just kept that from me they said screw this guy 
Uh, what is that? Oh, shit. All right. Well, let's go do that. Two boys ready to go. The only thing missing is the oil feed up here, but you put that after the two boys install. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in there. That's the easiest way to get. There are some other people that just uh, get it in through the side over there, but I found out that that scratches the hell out of the turbo trying to get it in there. So what I do, I just drop it in there and let it rest on top of the axle, get the manifold in, and then just bolt it up. All right, manifold is on, so tight. Now I gotta, gotta bring the turbo up and made it to the manifold. Right, peeps everything is installed so you can see there so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna I'm gonna get underneath the car install the downpipe and then start running some of the backing hoses for the uh, whiskey actuator there and yeah just pretty much finish up the turbo side of it right the exhaust and everything O2 sensors and then start working on the intake here also, it's not going to have a bottom uh, router pipe anymore because I guess uh, I didn't realize that the actuator is welded, the bracket is welded to the uh, compressor housing. So if you rotate it, then you can't hook up the actuator anymore. So that would only work for external Westgate um, turbos. So, oh well, we're just going to rock it like this until uh, he gets a precision turbo and we go for, I don't know, 700 plus, then we'll do the bottom route. All right, so everything is finished on the turbo side. Here, down pipe install, the sensors, oil lines, coolant lines, everything is tight and ready to go. So the next thing is the uh, intake. It's a four inch Ram Fab intake. So just gotta install it right there and move all this stuff out of the way uh we look all right so i ran out of memory space so instead of doing that i'm gonna go ahead and install here the uh, adapter plate for the methanol now that i got i'm working on this area so you know the intake is not gonna be in the way so i'm gonna do that now I'm noticing that this throttle body doesn't have the the coolant bypass so I'm gonna do that real quick if you don't live on on a place where it freezes you don't really need these just by doing this you lower your bats by a lot so I recommend you do this it's pretty simple you're just going to undo this hose and clip it down there let me see if I can get this out of the way
All right, this guy has been uh, recirculating some some oil, and we gotta get rid of that. See how dirty that is? That's recirculating oil through the uh, valve cover through here. If you got that hose running from there to your intake, all that crank pressure is gonna come out of there with oil through the intake, through the turbo, and through the manifold. And that is disgusting. Look at that. It's dripping oil. So this car needs uh, an oil catch can ASAP. Alright guys, so this is the uh, plate with the nozzle in there. So that one's gonna go right on there. Right on here. And then the throttle body right after that. Alright guys, sorry. Uh, my battery died last night and I just kept working a little bit but there is a new day here and this is what I got done so far I installed the the plate that I showed you last and I have my hose running to the uh, pump here you can see the fitting right there with the hose so so what I'm gonna do now is I forgot to install the check valve so I'm gonna put a check valve on the line there and then pretty much keep going I gotta do you know the top in a cooler pipe and intake and all that stuff so let's get right into it So next up is the uh, intercooler pipe on top that goes across over here. So this turbo, since we're running a, a three-port boost controller, we need a boost uh, source. So in this case, we're going to add it right here, uh, right out of the turbo. And this kit supplies with this fitting. So we're just going to drill a hole there, put this through, and pretty much just uh, seal it. And that's where you're gonna hook up your electric boost controller. Pretty simple, I'll show you. You can see it right there. I added a little uh, paper gasket. They sell these at any auto parts store. Just for, you know, that added uh, sealed around the hole there. And that's what it looks like inside. All right, let's go ahead and install it. All right, quick change of plans. So the owner of this car wants to do uh, the water pump pulley that I sell. So I'm just going to go ahead and install one and kind of show you how, how it's done. Because get, I'm getting a lot of questions of uh, how to install it, even though it's pretty straightforward. But anyway, here it is. All right, so here's what you get when you order the Gen 2 kit. You get your pulley and you get the, a smaller belt. And to install it, what we got to do is take off the belt. There's a tensioner down there. You're going to... You're gonna pull it with a wrench, I think it's a 12 millimeter, and then undo the belt. All right, that's the pulley right there. Now, before you undo the uh, the bolt, it helps if the uh, belt is on, right? So that it, it kind of holds the, the pull in place. 
Now it will not be enough, so you're gonna have to use two wrenches to undo these bolts. Uh, hold one, and then the other one uh, to you know to make to get it loose. Then it's gonna let you do two of them. Now the third one, you're kind of gonna have to uh, pry uh, the wrench in between two of the bolts to undo the, the last one. And also the uh, the tensioner is a 14 millimeter, not a 12. Here's the difference between the two of them. There you go, you pull it install, all the bolts tighten it. So now it's time for the new belt. All right, so the belt is installed. This is a shorter belt so that you don't got any uh, slip on that. So next up, now that we don't got the intercooler pipe on here, I'm gonna go ahead and install new spark plugs and we're gonna gap them to 0.024. All right, it's time to install that intake. Actually, I'm gonna do the inner cooler first, then the intake. All right, now that we got the intake installed, I went ahead already and trimmed some of the uh, the battery box. Got the ECU off of it, right? And the next thing that we're going to install is this guy, the boost controller. So I'm gonna mount it right here, right on there. All right, that's a great location for it. All right, that's the battery box installed. That's the boost controller right on there. That's a perfect location for all the hoses I gotta get to it. And the clip reaches pretty easily. This two right here. All right, so now we're gonna have to connect the hoses. So that one is installed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do real quick the uh, map sensor down there. Forgot to change that before I put the intercooler pipe. Yep, that's what happens. Now I'm probably gonna have to remove it again. All right, so after that, then we're gonna go ahead and put the battery on. So 
so we can open the trunk because these cars, if you don't got battery, you cannot open the trunk. So I'm gonna do that and then start working on the methanol electric side. All right, so this methanol system is uh, pretty new from snow. I never seen anything like this before. The other ones were different, the ones I'm used to. So anyway, it's now with two plugs here, then a set of cable go inside the car through here. That goes to the two lights. A light that lets you know it's working and a light that lets you know you're running low. <clears throat> the rest of the cables are running to these. This is the sensor that you're gonna hook up a, a vacuum line to it. And then the rest of the cables come down here for the pump. All right, pretty straightforward. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install the tank in the trunk. All right, so out here in the trunk, I'm wanting to install the tank right on here. And then the hose is just gonna go straight down to the floor and up to the front of the car. All right, that's the tank right there. These two cables are for the uh, level. So we need to wire those and run the hose right there. All right, and that's what it will look like all installed. Still gotta do the wires though, but it's pretty much finished there. All right guys, let me give you an update here. So I got everything pretty much uh, bundled up here. The intake is complete. Uh, the battery box is cut to fit. We gotta find out a solution for that ECU for now and staying like that. Uh, we gotta make like a bracket for that. You got the uh, snow performance pump right here. The hose is installed in and out. All right, so the next thing that we gotta do is install these two signal lights inside the car. So guys, yellow and green. Green is on, yellow you're running low. And where I put those is in here. I install these guys in these two unused uh, buttons on the factory dash. You're gonna see it right in there. You'll see it. All right, so you just unclip this guy from there. It's pretty easy, it's got taps uh, right here in the bottom from both sides. You push those in and it pulls out. All right, that's the finished product there. Two lights and then the little screen to control the methanol. Like I said, it's all just digital now. Didn't used to be like that. Yeah, so I'm pretty much done with this. Just gonna hook up the battery, put some oil, coolant, and turn it on. Alright guys, that is going to be it for this video. So, the car is going to get tuned by Freak Tune. 
um, they're, they're, they're gonna be in the process of doing that now so after that's done we're gonna go ahead and actually uh, show you guys a dyno video see see how much it makes uh, but yeah that is it for now um, I'm gonna keep working on this guy and the next video you're gonna see me uh, installing the engine and some other stuff so stay tuned